record formatting your document webinar presented by Candida Spence from the Digital Literacy Training of the ANU Library. This webinar focuses on how to use Word within an academic setting, in particular how to use Word to efficiently format long documents. The training materials that are supporting this webinar have some more features you may want to consider implementing in your daily work. Today's webinar format is for both Windows and Mac users, so I will focus on the following items. And in the next slide, I'll discuss other webinars that might be of use if you are continuing to do a long document or thesis during your studies at ANU. images with the numbers indicate the steps involved for formatting your thesis while at ANU. The following workshop webinar of Word for Academic Writing, Maintaining Consistency in Your Thesis webinar will use a sample thesis chapter template to show you how to maintain consistency in your thesis. Then while you are writing your chapters, it is recommended to use a reference manager. EndNote or Mendeley webinars are on offer. There is also Zotero support available online at zotero.org and contacts in the law library that can assist you with Zotero. Number three is applying captions for tables, maps, figures, and charts. In this webinar, we will touch on the basics of captions, but it's very beneficial to begin using early in the process to label all your captions appropriately. Keep your chapters separate throughout the writing process. And then step number five is covered in the Word for Academic Writing, Putting Your Thesis All Together webinar where we join all chapters into one document and practice maintaining consistency throughout. That webinar refers to how to apply the ANU policy for the thesis requirements, such as the title pages and other requirements. Participants can join this webinar even if they are in the early process of thesis work, as it is a practical session where bringing together a few sample chapters and it'll give you a good overview to the thesis process. That is the background for the context of today. And we are going to be starting using an exercise file. But one thing to point out is I'll be demonstrating on a Mac and there's a few features that are significantly different in Windows. For instance, the paragraph launcher. Paragraph formatting is what we'll be covering first and we'll need to access this dialog box. So for those of you on a Windows platform, you'll find yours on the home tab, paragraph group, the tiny red launcher in the corner of that line. The Mac users will go along the top of their Word menu, format, paragraph, but the dialog boxes are similar once we get into that. Formatting paragraphs. This is an area of Word you should become quite familiar with as it's used on a regular basis and the settings behind styles, especially paragraph styles, is where you need to set these initial settings. If we go to our home tab and turn on our show hide. The show hide shows the formatting marks within a document. Every time you press enter or return at the end of a line, it's a paragraph marker where the blue markers are located. So the settings for the paragraph are somewhat hidden within this paragraph marker. But as long as you're anywhere in the paragraph, you can set some standards. I've already set up this document 
to use um, a style called body text thesis. It has 1.5 spacing in the paragraphs. It's using Arial 11. And at the end of the paragraph, if I highlight the line here, I've only had to press enter once before you st start your next paragraph or heading. And looking at the layout tab, it's a 15 point gap after that paragraph marker. So that's sufficient for the spacing to be in between paragraphs. 15 point gap where my arrow is located. Some styles require indentation in the paragraphs. For instance, Harvard and Chicago formatting of thesis may require you to indent the first line of the paragraph. This can be done and built into the style, but to show you how to turn on that, we need to go to our Remember, if you're on a Windows machine, which I'm not, you'll find a paragraph launcher somewhere here where it says paragraph and a launcher. On the Mac, we go to the top menu, format, paragraph. You should be on indents and spacing tab. Our paragraphs are justified and there's no indentation from the left and right, but this is where we want to turn on a special type of indentation, and it's called first line. If you look at the image in the box down below, it just changed from none to first line. 1.27 is the correct setting for a first line indent, so we leave that as it is, and we press OK. So now you can see the first line of our paragraph is automatically indented. And if it is built into the style and you're planning to use it throughout your document, then it's already set up and you won't forget to press tab. Some people prefer to use tab, um, but there are cases where it gets forgotten. Another type of indentation, which we'll cover in the maintaining consistency, would be an indentation for a quote within a academic writing. So that may require indentation from both sides, left and right, to bring it in. And it would be um, a style called quote in your list of styles when we have a look at them later. I'm now going to move to the end of my document so I can type in a reference. I did mention we would, it's recommended to use a reference manager, um, but not all writing requires that. So you can still type references in manually. And if you did, I'm just going to type a sample one and we can apply a hanging indent to it. type the full title and I'll just put some text so it wraps to the next line. So I now have my reference and I click anywhere on that line for the paragraph formatting. So once again if you're on Windows you go to your home tab and find the paragraph launcher. On the Mac, we'll do format paragraph. This time we select hanging. Hanging defaults to 1.27 and that's correct. So we say OK.
So hanging indents are used for works in or cited in bibliographies for the MLA, APA, Chicago, and various other citation styles. They allow for the reader to easily see the breaks between the separate citations and quickly scan a works cited or a author's name because the indentation provides a white space between them. Another feature of working with paragraphs I wanted to explain today is selecting a sentence. Later in the workshop, I talk about avoiding overuse injuries. And when you're working and you take your mouse and you select and hold and select a sentence from the drag and select from the beginning, and you're searching to find the full stop, you're putting pressure on your arms. An easier way to do it, if you click singly anywhere in a sentence to start with, then if you look at your keyboard, the Windows users, if you could press control and remain holding it, Mac users, press your command and keep holding. Now everyone click on the sentence where your mouse is and let go. It has selected the capital letter to the full stop. This also works uh, for sentences ending in exclamation marks or question marks. It recognizes the end of a sentence. You can now select something to highlight easily if you need to review it later on. It's still selected and you can cut and paste elsewhere. Um, I'm just going to drag and drop it in another location in the same paragraph. So I drag it and I have a little eye beam behind the text there and I'm dropping it in front of the word the. It's still selected so I can see where it's placed and I can either undo or click away and lock that in. So just to review, place your cursor in a, anywhere in a sentence, Windows users control click, Mac users command click. Now that we have covered paragraph styles, we need to understand heading styles, which are used in long documents. These heading styles will help create our table of contents and to move easier throughout our doc document with the navigation pane. Now I'm just going to show again the difference between the various platforms between Mac and Windows and where you find your style guide. In Windows, on your Home tab, you'll see a few of the styles showing and you'll find a Styles Launcher. So if you could click that now, you will get a Styles pane. So Windows, Home tab, Far End, there's a Launcher and it'll release um, a longer Styles pane. Mac, which I'll be doing, is also on the Home tab and the Styles pane button at the end. So Mac, Home tab, and Styles pane. And I click that once and I now have a list of styles. This varies how it demonstrates on everyone's machine. Mine has defaulted to all styles. So you can see there's nine levels of headings and if I carefully scroll, not to click on any of them, but just use my scroll, you can see there's other styles that are used within the document that can be applied. I already have a few already in this document, so I'm going to make the list smaller and select in current document. So my paragraphs, as I mentioned, are called body text thesis. I've actually created that style myself by creating new style and it has the requirements of ANU writing 
included in it, 1.5 spacing and a font that's part of the sans serif family. There is a style built into Word called body text, but it does live further down in the list, so it's harder to use when you're working on a document. So that's why I prefer and to keep mine with the actual Word thesis so I know it's the correct body text to be using throughout all my chapters. This style will be built into our chapter template in the following webinar. So if I click anywhere in a paragraph, I can see right here on the Mac that my current style is body text thesis and on the windows you don't have this area but on the windows you have a blue border around what is active at the moment and it should be body text thesis if you're anywhere in a paragraph. We'll now return to the top of our document and we'll begin applying some styles. The sections are already laid out, so they should be easy to locate. And we'll begin with heading one. Click anywhere on the line of inside the greenhouse. Move over to your navigation uh, styles pane and click heading one. Heading one is Arial 14 point bold. And now the rest of the headings will become headings two or three. Heading three will be a sub numbering of heading two. So the greenhouse effect will be heading two. We then have greenhouse gases in the future, heading two. Scrolling down to the next page, climate change in our future, heading two. On the next page, feedbacks is also heading two. Preparing for change is a heading two. What can you do is a heading two. The climate system is a heading two, but it now has two subsections modeling the climate system. So that will now be a heading three. So that one has italic to differentiate. Next part of the session will be turning on the numbering. And we also have climate change in Australia's region as a heading three. The last one we'll put back to a heading two. So to see how we work with our headings now that they've been applied, we go to our view tab, navigation pane. Now on the max, you begin with the thumbnails pane. We actually want to select the document map which is next to it. The Windows image would have gone straight to this um, image here. Um, if you're using an older version of Mac, you'll need to find it on your top menu and it's in one of the uh, view document sections, view document map. So now you can see we have our headings. The triangles are referring to where they could collapse. So this is useful when you have brought together maybe your full thesis and you've got a long list of sections and chapters and it might flow through to the next page, you could minimize any triangle and collapse. So it's just for vision of the navigation pane, nothing happens to your text and you can expand it. Inside the greenhouse is all one heading one. So if you collapse it, everything would be minimized within that. So 
So now these sections are used to create your table of contents, but they're also used to move more efficiently throughout your document. As soon as you click on them, you're on page three. If you click on the climate system, you're now on page six. So it's very useful to save scrolling through a long document. The review pane is next to it, and that's part of track changes, which we'll have a look at later. And search is quite useful. If you type in future in this document, you will find many times when the word future is used. And once again, if you select which version you want to go to, it'll take you to that page of the document. It's only temporary highlighted everything yellow but to get rid of it before you move on, you need to clear this text area back to nothing. So the yellow has disappeared. With that find and replace, it's great to put in table. And if you had tables one through five in this document, you could easily find your tables and go to it if you've forgotten what exact number it was. So you just type table and you'd see all five tables. So later, if we once we insert our table, we might return to this find and replace and try it again. So with the navigation pane in the Max, um, I've shown you what all you can do, but on the Windows, we actually have some additional features that are available to be used when using the navigation. In the Windows version of the navigation pane, once the headings are set up, they can use the navigation pane, select a heading such as the climate change in our future. On the navigation pane, drag and drop it to after feedback. Let go and it takes all of the text that was in that section and moved it. It's currently gray so you can see where it will place it, but as you can see it's moved the heading and all the subsequent paragraphs that were within that section. It is only available on Windows. It doesn't work on Macs. So once you're happy with that, you click away and it'll be locked in. If you had a heading and subheadings, such as the climate system is heading two, and these two are heading three, if you drag and take that and place it before, what can you do? It will take the heading and all the subsequent headings with it so it stays together. So now you can see the climate system modeling and climate change has stayed together. If you are unhappy with it, you would just simply click undo on your top menu. If it's fine where it is, you simply click away and it's moved, it's moved there. If anything was numbered, so let's turn on numbering, multi-level numbering, Heading one and try the same. So we'll move the climate system again. It's currently 1.6. We'll drag it up, drop it after there, and everything renumbers. Okay, we're back to our document and we're ready to turn on multi-level numbering. Multi-level numbering is used in most thesis, but some thesis do not require numbering. So it all depends on the discipline and college you're working with. So if we're ready, we can insert some multi-level numbering. And because we've used the headings, we're able to um, use a multi-level list numbering on our home tab. Place your cursor at the beginning, I and inside. 
Home tab, you have your bullets, your numbering, and the third one over is called the multi-level list. And we want to go to the second row and over to the third one because you can see it has numbers based on the heading levels we've just applied throughout our document. So we click that once and it should flow through the document. With the numbering, you can't really adjust it. It starts right here at the letters of the headings. When we're ready to change a level, since for instance, feedbacks, if we decided it should be a heading three, you can go over to your multi-level, uh, your styles and change it to a heading three. It then increased the numbering to 1.31 and it altered the rest. So I'll do that again. 1.4 was feedback and 1.5 was preparing for change. But feedback I decided should be a subsection of climate change. So I went to my styles pane and I made it a heading three. Preparing for change is 1.4 and everything's changed automatically. So that's the benefit of using the numbering so it readjusts as you add and remove sections. If we were writing chapter two, every time you start a new document, you're supposed to keep them separate as I suggested, you would just simply change this numbering to number two and the rest will flow throughout this chapter. So we place our number on the, place our cursor on the capital I, first instance of heading one in the document. Go to multi-level list numbering and at the bottom, is an option to define new multi-level list. It's advised never to touch the numbering that's gray because that's coded and linked to our um, headings and this will be the same when we do captions. We want to find a section called start at and we change it to two. In the Mac it's right where I'm located but on your Windows machine, you won't find it on the, there. You'll find a button in the bottom corner called More. If you could click the More and you'll get a secondary panel on the side and in the middle, there should be a Start At. And currently it should say one, so you just change that to two. You change this for each chapter um, to what chapter you're working on. Then say OK and it's gone through your whole section and numbered it with chapter two. We're now ready to work on our table and we're gonna insert it into this document. So if we just press save at the moment and we locate our table file We want to add a table caption at the top before we get into formatting our table. Captions are located under the reference tab and moving past the insert citations and bibliographies, insert caption and other areas that you'll need for numbering press caption and if yours is set at figure you just need to change it to table. The title of our table is sitting right against the number one so start with a space bar and type Australian climate and data research. Press OK. You do have the ability to change the text once it's here. It's not locked in, but if we put our cursor out in the left 
margin, you can see once again the gray coded numbering. So the next table in the document would be number two and it's all coded to that. Now we want to talk about our table. We need to insert a top row to put our heading and the heading will be repeated to the next page. So now that we're in our table, so you must be in your table, along your top toolbar, view, table design, table layout. This table layout has a feature to insert a row above. So layout and insert above. We now have some room to type our heading. Tab to move to the next column. And to make it more defined, we're going to increase the height of this row. So keeping our cursor on that row, back to our layout tab, you can just increase the row height as you prefer. So we'll take it up to one centimeter. The text is sitting at the top of the document uh, cells. If you highlight them, also in your table layout tab, we have images of how you can format your text within those cells. So we want to align to the center and the center. So meaning center of the row and the center of that height we just made higher. We might add it to be bold. So on our home tab, while it's selected, bold. So looking at our document, it does go on to two pages, which quite often happens, but the reader can't view the heading anymore on the subsequent pages. So that's the importance of turning on the repeat header rows. So you need to select both cells again. Then we need to go to our top menu, layout tab again to the far right, repeat header rows. So it's gray in the background. It's not gray in the background. We click once and click away. Now it is gray, so that means it's turned on. You can check by scrolling down and you can see it is turned on. It's not preferred to try to double click here because it is locked and placed there. So any changes you can make up here and it will reflect back there. So if you change it to descriptions for 2021, sorry, then you scroll down you can see that change has taken place. If for any reason you actually had multiple heading rows, um, you would just simply still select them and turn on the repeat header row of the multiple ones and it will repeat as it, as it does on the second page. So another feature of Word is page breaks. So yes, you could insert a page break in this table to balance out the text, but then you would lose the repeat header row and you'd have to insert them manually later on. If you place your cursor on item C, we're going to go back to our format paragraph. So for those of you on Windows, you would go to your home and then your paragraph group and you'd find a launcher somewhere around here. For those of you on Mac, you'll go to your Word top menu format paragraph. We don't want the indents and spacing. We want the line and page breaks tab. We want to select page break before. So select that one and say OK. So what it's done now is you have your section B and now section C is kept all together 
with a repeat header row and placed on the next page. Show hides will show a code of a little black square. That's to indicate that you've turned on that feature and that way if you can't figure out if you inserted more rows and it broke in a different spot you will remember when you turn on your show hides that you inserted that feature. Once we combine this with our full document in a moment we'll um, be taking it off so we can practice that. The last thing on tables I wanted to show you is using your ruler on your view tab. My ruler is on at the moment. If yours wasn't, you would turn it on view tab ruler. Place your cursor on this first dot point and just to make the best use of all the space you can on a table, we might just minimize the little white gap here. So we go to our ruler and there's a triangle with our left indent. If we just drag it back one increment and let go, we have a little bit more space and so we can make that, we've, since we've made that formatting change, we can use on the home tab the format painter. Don't single click, I'd like you to double click it. So it'll copy the formatting of this new bullet to other places, multiple places. So if I double click Format Painter, click anywhere on the next bullet point, the next bullet point, and the next bullet point. We can go through some of our other lines and apply the bullet point. And then we know it matches the one we created on the previous page. And we don't have to be looking at it and wondering if it's the same. Turn off our format painter, just click once. And then we have the ability to press enter to have multiple um, bullet points in our document. So we might save our table and to insert it into a document instead of once again using all your energy to select from the beginning to the end and copying and pasting we're going to use an easier feature which is insert text from file so save and close that table and returning to our document go to 2.3, put your cursor at the N in natural ecosystems and we're first of all going to talk about section breaks and page breaks. If I just insert a page break I have the code for page break and natural ecosystem sits on the next page. And that's fine if you had to do that for a uh, purpose of keeping text together. But what I want to show you is what a section break is and why it's different. So put your cursor in the margin and press delete. We now want to instead on your layout tab under breaks drop down, section breaks heading, next page break. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm putting in a next page break as you can see, and I'm now setting a new rule for this page. I want it to be landscape for my table. So I keep my cursor on the N in natural, go to orientation and select landscape. It's now gone to landscape and we're ready to insert our table at this point. So inserting our table on the insert tab and go to your far right 
you see advanced and equation, it's in the group just next to it. Sometimes if your um, version is collapsed, it might be under the text drop down and then you'll see these. Under the object, we want another drop down called text from file. So if everyone can locate text from file, that will open up a dialog box. And you will find your word table you just saved. Say insert. And there's your paragraph natural ecosystems. And here's our table. Since we've gone to make it landscape, we might just click anywhere in that last column. And we now have our table design and table layout. Under table layout, we want to insert a column to the right. And now we have room for more data and we have a portrait page, which our section break next page break. Then we have our table, but it's broken because of that coding we added. So we might go and remove that now. Putting our cursor on the I and item. Home tab, paragraph group for the Windows users to the paragraph launcher. Format paragraph for those on Mac. And remove the page break before. And say OK. And now it's come together but we do maybe need to add another section break. Let's fix our caption first. So if we click anywhere on the caption, you can see caption has now appeared in my current style or it's, in, it's also in my list. If you can't see it, you might need to change your list to full document and scroll to find it. With the caption, remember don't click on it, but move your mouse to the far end where the drop down is and modify style. This is caption that lives in all documents in Word. We're going to change it in this version to Arial to match the rest of our document. And we can leave it at nine or you can change it to 10. Bold, italic, turned off, so I've turned on bold, but I've turned off italic. And I've changed it to a black font, which is just automatic is black fonts. So say okay. And now our caption looks a bit better. On our navigation pane, we have our find and replace. And now if you type in table, you will see table one comes in the, in the list and I click on it, it takes me to the table. So once you have more tables in your documents, you can move more freely to find the tables. So just remember again to clear your field and return to your navigation pane of your sections. So now our tables needs a bit of fixing. We may not break item B to go to the next page, but we might just uh, move this last cell to sit together on the next page. So we place our cursor on that marker for the cell and on our home tab in the windows, you do the paragraph launcher. On the Mac, we do format paragraph age break before and say OK. So now our table heading rows are repeated still and we don't have a split row sitting on one page. So remember if you turn on your show hides you'll see that black square to remind you that your page break before has been turned on. 
Now we're ready to fix the rest of our document to return to portrait. So we put our cursor at the natural ecosystems. We want to go to our layout tab, break, next page break. We now have that break in there and we want to change the orientation to portrait. So now our document successfully has portrait, landscape, pages, and back to portrait. The next part of the training today is track changes under our review tab. And this also has slight variants when you're in Windows. So in the Mac, we go to our review tab, track changes, it's currently off. Click the button once and now it's green and active as on. In the Windows environment, you'll have track changes and maybe an image of a paper with a pen across it. Click it once and click away and behind the pen and paper will be a gray border to indicate track changes is on. On the Windows and Mac environment, it's a bit hard to see, but at the bottom of my screen, I have my page numbers, my Word, English, Australian. Track changes is, uh, feature is on here. It's on, it triggers on and off. If yours is not displaying, you would simply right click on this gray menu bar and turn on track changes with a tick bar. So yours may be unticked. If you tick it once, it'll turn on. So I can look at a glance when I've left it on. So now that mine's on, I can add and remove sentences that I don't think is necessary. It needs to be showing as all markup. A lot of the Windows um, Word versions will be at simple markup. So you're, if yours is defaulted to simple markup, please change it to all markup so you can see what's happening. Mine has defaulted to setting up um, my revisions in balloons. So if I wanted to go to markup options and I can have it in line is the one I prefer. So also in the uh, Windows version, you should have that under your show markup. Windows version is called Show Markup, and then there'll be a balloons, and you can change it to inline or keep the balloons. We now want to drag and drop, so we can use that command click or control click on the windows, drag and drop it to the line above. So with um, dragging and dropping, you can see it's use the green strike through, double, and then a green underline to show where it's sitting now. You can add words to, as your track changes is turned on. And what you need to remember is when you're done with track changes, to turn it off if you're doing any type of editing that you no longer require it to be turned on so that you don't have it tracking as you go. So first of all, uh, some editing is left on throughout the whole writing, uh, track changes are left on through the whole writing process and that's fine so you don't feel you need to accept or reject them all the time. I also wanted to show you the reviewing button. So if we click that, it actually turns on that section on the navigation pane. So that's the reviewing one. It's a running story of what's happened in the document. This was deleted, then there was an insertion of a sentence, then there was a movement, and then there was another insertion of some words. So that's another way to view your edits. That is also available on the Windows um, 
document. It's called the review pane on your, it's called the review pane and it's in the same area of your tab on the Windows environment. So now we're ready to accept and reject our changes. We might leave two of them behind so we don't need to accept anything. My preference is to always work with the next change. So I slowly move one through one. So I go next change and I deleted that sentence. I might just leave that one there because I need to you know, work on it with my supervisor. So I'll move to the next one and I'll accept that change. So I'm gonna accept that I move that sentence up and it'll delete the double strike through at the same time. Then I go to my next one, which was millions, and I'm gonna reject that. I'm, it's not correct, so I'm gonna reject it, and it'll go back to reading temperature of a few degrees. But if I don't want to view this red markings all the time, you can change it to show no markup. And if I turn it to no markup, the sentence starts at the comma but because I had deleted that text. So you can either leave it as all markup or you can put it back to no markup. Now our track changes is still on. We can see that at the bottom. You can click on the bottom or you can click on the top menu bar to turn it off. The next feature of the review pane is using comments. Comments can be wor worthwhile for editing or notes for yourself, especially to remember to go find a reference you may have forgot to quote in the current paragraph. So a new comment that I am writing here, it's listing on my side, bar is find reference. You can move throughout your document and view previous and next um, comments if you want to, and you can delete or resolve your comments. I've taken it back to no markup and my comment has disappeared. So you may want to leave it on if it's something you need to follow up. Okay. We're going to talk about footnotes and endnotes. Now this is just referring to in your text, when you finish an idea you want to reference, place your cursor appropriately. It's on your reference tab and when I say insert footnote or end note. I'm not referring to the end note software. I'm referring to the note that goes at the end of the document, um, but I'm going to insert a footnote which is located on the page you are on. Insert footnote provides some text for you to type your reference and as you type it would use a style that's been built into your document. So I'm just going to grab a reference from my EndNote library that's currently open and I'll insert whatever comes up. So my EndNote library has inserted my reference. I place my cursor on that reference and you can see what current style it is. It's called footnote text. Not matching my um, document as, as it's an Arial, so I might modify footnote text. So just remember when you locate it in your list of styles, Anything you click on will apply. So we need to scroll 
to find it and I'm unable to scroll because it's not listing here so we need to turn on the list all styles and then we need to find footnote text and there's footnote text and I want to modify it so I go over slide to the side modify style We want to change it to Arial and Arial 10 point is what we would put our caption at which is fine but I think for a footnote we should take it down to 9 point because Arial is a larger font in general than Times New Roman so 9 point would be more suitable for a footnote to match our Arial 11 point paragraph and our Arial 11 10 point caption. So simply press OK and click away and now all of our new footnotes will always in this document be in Arial 9 point. Okay. So just reviewing what we covered today. We have worked through the importance of learning how to format your paragraphs and headings and applying multi-level numbering and using your navigation pane. With our table we learned the breaks and how to manage them and applying that table caption. We didn't cover margins, um, they'll be covered in the next workshop but Margins are set at 2.5 uh, for most academic writing at ANU, especially thesis as part of the new policy from last year. We worked with page breaks, section breaks, track changes, and footnotes and endnotes. The last one is just the importance of all the work you're doing. Um, every 45 minutes you should do some exercises don't sit too long at your computer and regularly even vary your sitting posture. Um, in our handout that goes with today's workshop we have um, some other tips uh, especially working with a laptop if you find you're looking down too much you might want to purchase an external keyboard and mouse and just raise the entire laptop so the monitor is more at eye level like a desktop machine. So that's all for today's workshop and you'll find more tips in the handout to refer to.